Hello students, welcome to EPG Patasala. I am Dr. K. R. Ram Mohan, Associate Professor, Head, Department of Anthropology, Sikkim University. Today we are going to talk on a module called Manchester School of Anthropologists. Manchester School is also famous for conflict theories. This is from the paper Theories and Methods in Social Cultural Anthropology. So before we go to this module, we should see what are the learning outcomes. To develop an understanding about the Manchester School of Thought, to know about various concepts studied by this school of thought, to analyze the concept critically. So before we go to see what is this Manchester School and what, what are the contributions by these scholars who are from Manchester or Manchester University and Lord's Livingstone Institute. Manchester School of Thought is popularized with the result of extensive fieldwork by the scholars done in rural and urban British Central in Africa. Now this is basically a colonial setting where the British colonies in Central Africa have been studied by these scholars. So this research is done by uh, scholars from Department of Social Anthropology, Manchester University in association with the Rhodes Livingstone Institute. And it all started with Max Gluckman, who has contributed significantly from this department. So Gluckman was more focused towards the theoretical and methodological approaches in this what we call the conflict theories. The field workers of this Manchester school closely observed the situations of various types of conflicts contained within an apparent overriding order that is continually threatened by the reluctance of individuals. Now in this situation, the individuals when there is a conflict, they are in a situation whether to accept compromises that do not fulfill their immediate desires. Now the main characteristic feature of this Manchester School of Thought is it completely focuses upon conflicts which have been erased in these ethnographic sites and how methodologically these have been analyzed in actual situations. So at one hand you have conflict, at one hand you have this conflict resolution mechanisms. So in this way we can say that the scholars are mainly focused on conflicts and conflict resolution patterns of a society. In a sense that how a society deals with these kinds of conflicts and what are the different conflict mechanisms have evolved or controlled specifically in these different ethnographic fieldwork observations. So, Manchester School has come with four main aspects. The first one is the social problems. So, the main study area of the students of Manchester School was various social problems in these colonized British Central Africa. And the different social problems in this Central Africa were mainly due to colonialism. The process of industrialization and lab, labor migration were also amongst the major ones. So when you look at these British colonies, they have own set of problems. But later, due to the process of industrialization and people have migrated to elsewhere also brought a different set of problems. Now how do they articulate these problems and what is the process of this articulation? of 
people who are experiencing at that level. So scholars thought that it should, in order to develop a theory on social problems, they emphasize, the scholars emphasize this relative correspondence and the contradiction among the different systems and domains of social relations. So first they want to see what are the different systems are in place in that particular society and what are the different domains or levels of social relations that people have with each other. Webner characterizes this is a second strand of Manchester School theory saying that management of systems, how people manage these systems of relations and what are the spheres of this articulation, I mean the mechanisms of articulation, how do they exhibit, how do they express. In many cases, the society's structural paradigms. At one you have the fit paradigm, at the one you have the contradiction paradigm. So whether all individuals or the members of the society quote unquote fit in this paradigm or all the individuals in this another paradigm that they contradict with the, the existing social structure. And they describe this social processes as the areas of articulation between these disparate spheres, what I call the social spheres. So such processes were observable in a sense when you are in a field that how people negotiate within the fit and the contradiction paradigm. So they are more interested in this articulation process, this negotiation process. And these also reflect the relations between village organization with individuals and with the state. Relations between industrial society or industrial setup and the tribal society sphere. Or the connections between the worker organization and the larger systems of an urban or industrial cultural sphere. So what kind of relations that people possess and how do they articulate in these relations within the village organization or with the state or the governance aspects. Now, Gluckman argues that given this structural model, a point of articulation within is there and this gives to understand the a political hierarchy which is existing in colonial Africa. So now when there is a hierarchy in the political structure, how people are situated in this hierarchy and what roles they play, the leader, the sub-leaders, the individuals in this ladder and how people have these relations and how people exhibit their roles. Now another important significant factor is the interpersonal interaction which I am going to continue this. Now, the scholars in this Manchester school of thought, conflict theories and conflict mechanisms asserted that existence of multiple sets of social interaction or spheres of social relations. An individual who has placed in different sets of social spheres has to deal differently in this given hierarchical system. You are in a, an organization, you are in a village setup, you are in a family setup, you are in the other community aspect. So multiple sets of social reactions, that's what uh, the scholars in this school of thought have postulated. 
Now, social change occurs over the entire social system. However, some spheres are affected more than the others. If there is any change in the entire social system, we can observe within this articulation that some aspects of our internal aspects of the social system might be changed. So in such colonial situations, especially in this tribal societies of Central Africa, they are deeply engra ingrained with a, a set of values. They have their own set of values within the village. They have values towards the industry. And apparently, they might be also having separate value systems according to their ethnic divisions. Or we can take to another level of racial divisions. So each subset has its own value systems. Now, how an internal subset is maintained without any conflict? So they say that there is an internal consistency. If there is an internal inconsistency, we have to see in what situation there is an internal inconsistency taking place at that particular level. So, scholars opine that one has to take the situational selection under what circumstances this happened, what triggered this, which gives social actors where their value systems are in conflict. And how does it operate in that particular time, which is very interesting from this school of thought. How people negotiate, how people have this set of values and that set of values when a situation arises within a subsect. Now taking further, scholars use another concept as semantics and rhetoric. Now how people use these structures of language at a semantic level? Or is it just only a rhetorical process, particularly in ritual and judicial process? How do they act out? How do they spell out? What are the semantics involved? What is the meaning of what do they say? Or what do they utter? Interestingly, both at a ritual process and a conflict resolution process at what we call the judicial process the internal judiciary system. So in Gluckman's work, while he's describing the judicial process among the community called Logi, he gave an exploration of three things. One is the relation between concepts of the person. The second one is the language of rules or rules of language. And the third one is the logic of situation. So these three things are very important in this community called Logi. How a conflict has been understood, how a conflict has been resolved in, at an indigenous judicially, and what is the role of language, and how language rules are being internally understood in relation to the situation which has prevailed at that particular time. So, so one can understand the relation between the intrinsically intertwined relationship of all these three things. So he further established that what is that culturally constituted notion of an individual or a person which is manipulated by the judge to inform their rhetoric and finesse while not disturbing the ambiguity inherent in these rules. So while delivering the judgment or while giving a, 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 some kind of a solution to these 
conflicts how do they place without disturbing without any ambiguity of the cultural rules of the language rules and the the the, the place or the position where an individual is placed in that social relations of that society which gives many clues to anthropologists in understanding how a community resolves its own conflicts by incorporating language the rules which is involved and the logic internal logic which is also prevailing there so thus gluckman has established a system for investigating such forms of uncertainty which has occurred in a hierarchy of norms and values so if a person is placed in an hierarchy a low or middle or high and there was a deviance there was a conflict deviance of the norms and values conflict arises because when there is a deviance or conflict of interest of values gluckman along with other scholars as taken some of the theoretical propositions by the functional doctrines which at that point of british anthropology where malnowski's ideas of functionalism and structural functionalism was was been taken for granted and they are in put in practice in understanding all kinds of societies and cultures so incorporating the functional aspects or the functional ideas to formulate a statement about interrelationships between such factors how the racial inequalities particularly the south african whites which they have formulated all the rules of governance and they put the indigenous africans with low wages in that hierarchical system which gave all kinds of nutritional problems and health problems for these quote unquote reserves of this ethnic population and we can also see because of this colonial masters there is some kind of erosion or declining of their traditional leadership among this african communities and they also brought some kind of mechanism where the local population have lost their livelihoods which are completely dependent upon the masters so gluckman devised a view being adopted from dorkeam then to malnowski then to ratley brown that any particular culture or a society follows a moral order that manages itself even in a situation of conflicts now what happens if there is a conflict because there is a unity when we when we talk of a functional point of view that societies are existing because every institution has its own role to fulfill the desires of its community members which could be self desires and what happens if that institution fails to fulfill the desire of an individual and there erupts some kind of an unrest and that is the starting a symbol of social constraint because at one social system is default defunct it disrupts the other social institutions and that becomes a society at large which is started to have little chaos so gluckman founded that rituals can maintain social order 
particularly the religious rituals and other forms of social rituals can maintain social orders because they have in them the functional mechanisms which maintains harmony to be reinstated after breaches of the social orders have occurred. Now given a situation if somebody violates a rule or somebody violates some kind of moral order because his desire is not fulfilled. Immediately there is a ritual or there is a mechanism to bring back to the normalcy of that member or a group of members. Now, an important concept which emerged with this school of thought is the cross-cutting ties or cross-cutting alliances. What are these cross-cutting ties and cross-cutting alliances within these community members? So the principle of cross-cutting ties depends on the assumption that conflicts are inevitable in any social system and may actually serve towards the maintenance of these social systems. Now, by saying cross-cutting and cross-cutting alliances, it is inherently built that whenever there is any kind of constraint or some kind of an unrest erupts or some kind of a tension begins, which little deviates in the social structure. But again, there is a tendency to come together which is an inherent quality to maintain the entire social system. That is, says the cross-cutting alliance. For an anthropologist, it is important to understand, first of all, why a conflict arises because of so and so, because of this a conflict arises. If a conflict arises, how does it again regroup, put in the place in order? So what are the mechanisms involved? How a society deals with this kind of conflicts when it arises at a situational level? Now, another important theme which has emerged what he calls as the dominant cleavage. Now, the dominant cleavage is the most apparent cleavage between two groups, group A and group B or group C or group D, any, any kind of groups in a given society. So in a changing system, there may be other cleavages concerning the two groups involved or within the groups. So cleavage is nothing but a mechanism where how a group maintains its own members within the group and with outside the group and how they downplay if there is any internal conflict and how do they express with other groups if there is any conflict with the other group. So it is a, some kind of a buffer which comes. Now, how people are situated? They call it as inter-hierarchical roles. Now, how two people are related in a political situation? What are the intermediate connections between one man to another man? Or what is the relation between a village headman and the common man? Or how a member of immediate or a superordinate place which is in a political situation in a village. So these gives clues or insights in understanding how people are situated in these roles or how they are politically connected. What is my connection as an individual to the head and how a head is connected to the normal villager. So understanding this thing they put this, the whole con called uh, social drama and its processual form. So they say that this is a kind of a social drama that we are all acting out. In short, the processual form of the social drama may be understood in terms of one is breach. If you break the rules, then there is a kind of a crisis which erupts and there is a redressive mechanism and there is reintegration or recognition. So if one breaches the rule, I'm not acting out in its own the established way, 
So there is a conflict or a crisis which arises. If there is a crisis arise, what is a redressive process or mechanism? Either punishment or this thing or to pay the fine or do something because you have, you have breached the rules and it has been disrupted, erupted. And again, once you do these rituals, you again reintegrated into the society. So these four things may give a lot of clues how a particular society or a culture organizes itself and how do they deal with these kinds of crises which arrives on and often. Manchester School of Scholars are prominent and they have been understood in terms of their contributions towards how societies particularly in Central Africa, which are the colonies by the British administrators, which focus on conflict resolution mechanisms. Their contributions are significant in making us to more understanding of how these societies internally maintain stability when any conflict arises, what were the different mechanisms adopted to deal with these kinds of crises, which makes the society to come back to normalcy. Manchester School of Theorists have taken both the functionalist and the structural functionalist approaches in understanding how not only in harmonious state of the society, but if and when a crisis or a situation arises, how cultures adopt and deal with both the individual and community at large in restoring the balance again. So in this, they propose this situational and contextual analysis both at a theory and a methodological level which is a significant contribution in understanding preliterate societies and the societies in the colonial administration and the changes that have taken place in these societies due to urbanization due to migration and various social tensions occurred and how these members resolve peacefully without disturbing the whole structural aspects of the society.